Firstly, let me thank you for placing your trust in me to lead this great institution of 20,000 plus members spread across the world in over 100 countries for 2021-22. I believe I am the second Irish president following Owen Kenny, who was president in 1986. It is humbling to follow so many great Sibsi presidents, and I would particularly like to thank Owen, who inspired me. The president last year, Stuart McPherson, spoke about the challenges of COVID-19. Lynn Jack, the year before, spoke about improving diversity. And Stephen Lisk, three years ago, spoke about change. I will follow up on all of those themes in my address today. What is clear in this era and going forward is that the only constant in our lives will be change. The last 15 months has seen quite profound change and many new challenges for the world. COVID-19 hit us like a hammer blow and has not given up yet. Our industry responded well, and of course we have all learned to work, meet, and indeed shop online. Whilst many people have tragically lost their lives, everyone has been affected. This is what our future may look like with a continually changing health environment and challenges we have not faced before. The development of the vaccine is an interesting and inspirational example of what educated and talented researchers can achieve when challenged with such a sudden and devastating event. However, COVID-19 did not come out of nowhere. SARS, MERS and Ebola all came before it. We had warnings from the World Bank and even Bill Gates to prepare for a pandemic. This reminds me of the, of the example of reactions to change and the analogy of placing a frog in boiling water. It jumps out, or so it is claimed. Alternatively, if the frog is placed in a pot and the water is boiled slowly, then the frog will go to sleep and not respond adequately to save its life. This is a colourful example of how it is often more difficult to respond to a slower changing environment than a fast changing one. The world was like a sleeping frog as we ignored the risk of the pandemic. And by the way, no wildlife were harmed in the writing of this speech. But let me present some examples of this analogy. Putting the frog in boiling water, or to put this into reality, a very fast changing environment is one that can lead to fundamental change. COVID-19 required such a response from governments who took urgent action and applied resources, and everyone had to change their behaviour promptly. Our industry was not found wanting as it responded to this challenge. Examples of this outstanding response include the SIBSI experts who responded early and fast to the building of various Nightingale hospitals. Others who developed SIPSI's guidance for ventilation and reopening of buildings, and also contributions to the work of REVA, the European Federation for Heating and Ventilation Bodies, and to scholarly papers addressing the new challenges of COVID-19. And of course, there are many more examples, not least the response of all of you and every organisation to the demand for changed working conditions and methods. The Grenfell Tower in 2017, resulting in seven, 72 tragic deaths, is another horrific example of a very fast changing environment. SIBSI engaged with and responded to the independent review of building regulations and fire safety by, June, June, by Dame Judith Hackett. This too is leading to fundamental change. We continue to be engaged in the development of new building safety regime contributing, for example, through the work of the Society of Facade Engineering and through our digital experts in the development of the golden, tr golden Tread policy to encourage transparency and accountability. This will require culture change in our industry, and we are on a path to that. The appointment of a Chief Inspector in building of Buildings in England is a key appointment in the drive to transform the construction sector 
and it marks an important milestone in the implementation of Dame Hackett's independent review. After Grenfell, it was realised that current regulations were not fit for purpose, were not being complied with, and that standards of, of competence were lacking. From the subsequent findings, it is clear that the industry was, as, was asleep, like the frog in a slowly changing environment. And indeed, that those who did express concerns did not or could not jolt the industry into change. This lack of ability to respond to a slowly changing environment is a very serious human frailty, and it behoves all of us to do all we can to avoid anything like Grenfell ever happening again. There are important lessons to learn, not just about improved building and fire regulations, but about everything that we do. If we were sleeping frogs about the building regulations, then what else are we sleeping through? Climate change, maybe? Global warming may also be a sleeping frog issue. We face enormous challenges to reduce our carbon emissions. I am not convinced that everybody in our industry fully appreciates the extent of the challenge needed or the urgent need right across the built environment in the training and CPD we undertake and how we educate undergraduates in the built environment professions. The SIBSI Climate Action Plan sets out many of the ways that SIBSI is already committed to responding to the growing sense of climate emergency. Sometimes the challenges we face in our everyday lives appear somewhat overwhelming to us as individuals. However, we are not acting alone. We do have to play our part in our organisations to help them respond to these creeping changes in the external environment and not behave like sleeping frogs. As building professionals, we need to be aware of best practice in our specialist areas, reading latest research and properly evaluating new innovations we implement, and at an advanced level, publishing insightful findings to evaluate what we do and inform others of the outcomes. This is what leaders of the industry do. Research in our industry is about a diverse community of engineering professionals innovating, evaluating and publishing. SIBSI publishes two world-leading research journals in our field in building services engineering, building research and technology and lighting research and technology. And both of those you may see on the shelves behind me. How do we best prepare our organizations given the volatility of the external environment? To respond adequately to slow moving change, our organizations need to be more agile than most are at present. We can more easily achieve agility by being inclusive, increasing diversity and promoting equality in our organisations. By giving life to a wider voice representing the wider community and ensuring we have a greater awareness of changes to our environment. An inclusive organisation is made up of people of different ages, backgrounds, religions, sexual orientations, race and physical abilities. It seeks to represent the society in a setting. There are often challenges and difficulties for people from minority groups entering and fully engaging in organisations. For example, Melinda Gates in her book, The Moment of Lift, talks about the difficulties for women contributing ideas in the early stages of Microsoft because of the male dominant culture there at that time. Although Microsoft has changed, such cultures need to be challenged. Male dominant cultures don't, miss, don't just miss a trick, they miss a lot of what is going on. Being inclusive in our organisations is not an act of generosity. It is essential for our organisations to, to survive in this changing world. Inclusivity is the way we can stay connected and alert, particularly when changes in a slowly changing environment where frogs fall asleep. Inclusive organisations are more capable, more agile, and can be more responsive to changes in either a fast or a slow moving external environment. Addressing deficiencies with respect to inclusion is not a comfortable discussion to have. I certainly claim no expertise in this matter. I have offended in this regard during my career. About 10 years ago, my employer, Technological University of Dublin, 
mandated that all interview panels would have a minimum 40% representation of male and female. In an engineering college and industry that was 90% male, I only foresaw difficulties for myself because of the shortage of women at senior level and the difficulty in finding them to participate in interview panels. I thought finding qualified women would be very difficult. Actually, it wasn't. I just had to look hard. Women and other minority groups in industry are out there, and maybe we just we are just not seeing them. Maybe we are guilty of unconscious bias, and we need to look at things differently. The effect of the gender balance policy in our university was that candidates were interviewed by a more balanced panel rather than a sea of dudes, as it is called. And guess what happened? We increased the number of female staff in engineering. Our previously self-perpetuating policy of male dominance took a dent. Furthermore, female academics going out to schools to recruit engineering students also inspired more young women and girls to go into engineering. Not only that, but it quickly became apparent to me that we had been missing aspects of the candidate's character when we had used all male panels. Women panelists helped us see things differently and to see some things that we previously missed in both male and female candidates. And overall, we performed much better in our staff selections. Those presently underrepresented need allies in senior positions to act as mentors or sponsors. So give them face time, listen to their issues, and even risk saying the wrong thing occasionally. We need to lean into the discomfort in order to facilitate change. Accept criticism when it comes our way, reflect on it, and empower minority, ethnic, and other groups. SIBSI's inclusivity statement says that an inclusive culture brings resilience, creativity, and innovation. SIBSI's collective goal is to ensure that the organization, together with the Building Services Engineering Professional Community, are welcoming to all. It improves our capacity to address the challenges of ongoing change. We need to make this ongoing conversation in SIBSI and in our industry. In her book, Invisible Women, Carolyn Perez highlights a modern first world for women where instruments are too big, cars are far less safe, and drugs are incorrectly prescribed. This is because research studies are male dominated with subjects. And of course, we know that women face greater dangers in society, undertake most of the unpaid work associated with child rearing and housework, and are paid less for equivalent work along with being underrepresented in senior positions. Perez cites the example of the New York Philharmonic Orchestra, which almost, had almost no women for many years. The women just weren't good enough. Until the 1970s, when the number of women recruited reached about 50% of the total. So what happened? Did the women get better? No. Blind auditions happened, and with it, the elimination of unconscious bias. We are all on a journey together, learning as we go, improving our organizations, and creating an atmosphere of trust and support. We must watch out for and identify bias in order to address it. As professional engineers, blatant discrimination or bullying in your presence must be called out at the time for what it is. This is part of behaving ethically in a modern society. Point 11 of the Code of Professional Conduct states that we must treat all persons fairly and with respect and embrace equality of opportunity, diversity, and the elimination of discrimination. We should also consider the role of positive discrimination where appropriate to achieve a better balance of opportunities. Flexible routes for progression. Opportunities for progression in our industry are vital at every stage. Ladders of opportunity are something we must always be conscious of creating. Historically, poor management looked at what a person couldn't do and identified barriers to their progression. Modern successful managers look at what a person can do and give people a chance and a clear pathway forward. 
Modern inspirational and successful leaders see the potential in everyone and guide it and indeed mentor it or act as sponsors. Modern apprenticeships allow young people to earn and learn. Anyone watching gradu graduate of the year competitions could only be impressed. We had our first apprentice of the year at the Sibsi Young Engineers Awards this year. In September 2019, Sibsi became the endpoint assessment organizer for four trailblazer apprenticeships, giving Sibsi the responsibility of the final assessment of the apprentice to ensure that they can do the job that they have been trained for. Sibsi have also established non standard routes to C Eng and I Eng for those with sufficient industrial experience but without the accredited qualifications. We ask applicants to demonstrate competence and to offer robust evidence in this regard. This is enlightened in my view and allows us to encourage applicants from a diversity of backgrounds to take advantage of our non-standard routes to membership. Sometimes people need mentors. Help those people climbing the ladder by identifying or acting as mentors or sponsors for them. Most of us through our careers got a lucky break with someone who inspired us. If you are senior, then find the time to offer a guiding hand to those advancing their careers. And if you are climbing the ladder, always be on the lookout for someone who can help you and ask for help. Mentoring can be time consuming, but sponsoring of people may be easier for senior people. This is about offering face time and facilitating ways for them to overcome hurdles. Sponsors identify mentors for junior or, or new staff and set aside time for them occasionally. And succession planning. Sibsi has taken an active position in succession planning. We actively encourage our regions, groups, and the Sibsi divisions to seek wider participation in their committees and amongst their leadership. We want to develop a steady and more diverse flow of volunteers to these roles. We are also very grateful to those who have served loyally in these positions for many years and for their dedication to Sibsi. We will develop our website to better advertise panel and committee vacancies, including person specs and time commitments, and to ensure we are inclusive and transparent in all opportunities. This is part of our determination to maintain a fresh flow of talent into leadership positions, increase our bandwidth, and provide wider representation of the industry. I would ask senior people and companies to encourage and facilitate all of their employees, junior and senior, to participate in these opportunities, which allow personal and professional development, networking, and a better functioning professional community. My friends, we have a long and tricky road ahead, but we have a talented team of volunteers and SIBSI staff to address it. Our volunteers exemplify SIBSI values. SIBSI empower others with knowledge, champion ta talented people, inspire others to join and contribute, and lead across the SIBSI community. Of course, we face many difficulties and challenges. In order to maintain a full bandwidth and understand the whole story, we have to be willing to have the awkward and difficult conversations ahead and lean into them in order to change our industry for the better by making it more inclusive and welcoming to all. Thank you all for listening.